Hello guys, the last lesson of the course about inertia of UGS and Laravel, lesson number 17, and this will be one of the longest lessons about user permissions because it's quite a complicated topic. So you need to take care of the permissions, actually logic, and then implement that logic both on the front end, so show or hide some links, and also on the back end for the case when someone may guess the URL and access the page without actually permission. So you will see that all in this lesson. And if you want the code repository for that, it's available for people who actually purchased the course here at laravaldaily.teachable.com. But I would advise not to purchase one course, but instead choose the yearly membership, which includes 28 courses at the moment. So you will get inertia course, other 27 courses, and everything I will release a year ahead. Coming up in 2022, React course, updated older courses about SAS, Eloquent, and other topics. So yearly membership is a good deal. Now let's dive into the last lesson of this course about inertia. And from tomorrow, we get back to our daily videos on Laravel Daily on various other topics. What did you think about this course in general? For those of you who watched it, shoot in the comments below. And now as the final lesson of this course, at least for now, let's take care of the permissions. And I've shared this short lesson before that about properties, global properties, deliberately because this is the same approach used for permissions. So you pass the permissions in the handle inertia request, whatever is the logic of your permissions, whether on the back end you use some library for that or some custom logic, whatever. You pass permissions here, like for example, an array, this is just one of the implementation. And for example, let's add posts view, some kind of rule, true, for example, true or false, and then posts manage, true or false, something like that. We will add more conditions in a minute. But I just wanted to show you the main logic and the approach. So you pass the parameters. And let's assume the scenario that some user may only view the posts and some other user like administrator may create, edit and delete stuff, right? And then whenever you have that permissions in the index.view, let's catch those permissions as properties here. So not only posts, but also permissions as object. So we won't have to repeat page props and stuff like that. So permissions here. And then on top, for example, for the button of edit, let's add V if here, V if permissions posts manage, let's save build successful. And if we refresh, nothing should change. We refresh the edit is still here, right? But if I have false here, for example, post manage false, right? Refresh and the edit is gone. So this is the principle. You pass the permissions from handle inertia requests and you add the ifs for the buttons or links. But that is only one part of the security of the permissions. For security protection, you need to add both front-end and back-end protection. So for the front-end, you need to show or hide some links or buttons, but also you need to make the same thing on the back-end. So if someone guesses the URL of posts, for example, to edit, uh, no, that post doesn't exist anymore. So post for edit. Look, I didn't have the button, but I guessed the URL. So we need to protect that as well. So let's implement the actual logic instead of true or false, some kind of logic of who does what. It will be a very, very simplified and almost fake logic. So for example, post view is true for users with ID one and two. So for example, in array auth user ID, or in fact, ID, array of one and two and post manage will be only for auth ID one. For example, ID one is super admin or something. Again, it's fake. It should be much more complicated on the back end, but just I wanted to show you the principle of how to work with permissions. Your permission logic may be much more complicated. So we have those. And now if we refresh, now we don't hide anything because I'm logged in with user ID one. From what I remember, yes, it's user ID one. But now, if I change that to user ID two directly from the database, and if we refresh, and of course, I need to re log in because the ID is not the same anymore. So edit is hidden. And let's implement the same thing for delete. So V if permission posts manage, delete is here as well. And also on top route post create link V if and if we refresh now, as you can see, no buttons at all. I can view the posts or about page, but I don't have permissions to manage anything. So that's great. 
Now on the back end, we need to protect the controllers. So if we open post controller, in here we need to implement some gates or permissions or roles or something like that. Basically in every method on top we need to add some kind of check. But that check should not be the duplication of this logic, right? We cannot in the controller easily access the variables from handle inertia requests middleware. So to avoid duplication, let's move those things into a property of a user model. So let's open user PHP model and let's add public function get permissions attribute again in your project it may be much more complex so return the array and inside of that array we have those permissions right and instead of that auth id we have the id of the actual user which is this id for simplicity okay and then in here we can reuse the same auth user permissions or if the user doesn't exist, empty array. And then in each method, we could do something like if auth user permissions and then posts view or something. So if not, for example, we abort with 403, which is forbidden, something like that. But it is pretty long piece of code for every controller. So for that, let's use Laravel policies. So let's generate PHP artisan make policy post policy for model of post. So who can manage posts? And inside of our post policy, which is generated, we have a lot of methods for view any view a particular post create and stuff like that. We need only two methods out of those. So we don't need to check for specific post. We need to check view any for the permission and create a new post. And we will reuse that create as manage post, something like that. So what will be our condition for view any? It's the same thing as post view. So return user permissions posts view like this. And then in the create, we will be able to create or manage posts if we have post manage. So we have our policy, which is automatically resolved from Laravel 8 point something from what I remember. So we don't need to register that policy anywhere. In the older versions, you had to do that in the auth service provider here. And now in the post controller, we can do something like this authorize ability of view any for the post model like this post class, sorry, like this. And this will do the same as that 403 board line. And if we do that here, this authorize create post and let's try it out. So we refresh our page. I'm logged in as user ID two, who doesn't have any permissions. And I haven't protected the edit form, which means that this will work, but I have protected the create. Let's take a look if it works. If I load post create. We load and we have this action is unauthorized. So this is what it means to protect from the backend, from the controller. So even if you load that post create manually somehow, you will be still protected. So let's implement the same thing. This authorize in store method, edit method, update method and destroy everywhere here. Again, this is one way to implement the permissions with policies. You can define the gates somewhere. So check out the Laravel documentation for everything related to gates, policies, authorization, and authentication. And check out Laravel packages like Spati permission, like Bouncer and others to implement your personal roles and permissions system.